This tutorial is about using logical expressions to index subarrays in MATLAB. This is very useful when you want to find the elements of a vector or matrix that correspond to a specific condition, such as finding all the elements that are equal to a particular value, or replacing all the elements less than a specific value with zero, a simple form of thresholding. We will now explore how to perform this type of indexing. Recall from the video on logical expressions that using a relational operator on a vector and a scalar returns a vector the same length as the input vector with ones and zeros in each location, indicating whether the comparison of that location with the scalar was true or not. For example, a equals 1 through 6, a less than 3, this returns a 6 element vector the same size as the vector a where the first two elements are 1, since they are less than 3, and the next four elements are 0, since they are not less than 3. In MATLAB, we can actually use a vector of logical values, such as that returned by the previous example, to index a vector of the same length. For example, let's assign the output of the previous example to a variable. b equals a less than 3. If we use the vector b as an index in the vector a, it will return the values of the locations in a that correspond to a location with a 1 in b. a of b returns 1 and 2. Since the first two values in b are 1 and the rest are 0, we get back the first two elements of a. Alternatively, we could have written a of a less than 3, skipping the intermediate step of assigning a less than 3 to another variable b. This is the exact same thing, since b is simply a less than 3. This kind of notation makes indexing with logical expressions very easy in MATLAB. A more complicated example would be if we want to find all the elements of a random vector that are less than a given value. For example, let's create a random vector with values between 0 and 1 using the rand command r equals rand 20 comma 1, which will create a random vector of 20 elements in a column vector. Now, let's find all the values less than 0.3. We will do this with r of r less than 0.3, just like we did before with a. Notice that this returns a vector that is shorter than the original since we are only getting back the values that correspond to the relations being true. If we want to keep the vector the same length, but replace all the false locations with zeros, for example, we could do this. r of not r less than 0.3 equals 0. Now, we get back the same length vector, but with all the values greater than or equal to 0.3 set to 0. Notice how I use the negation operator. Since we want to index all the values that are false this time, to set them equal to 0, and to leave all the values less than 0.3 alone. We could also have more complicated conditions for the index. Recall again from the video on logical expressions, that using logical operators such as AND, OR, and NOT on two vectors operates on the vectors on an element-by-element -element basis. This can be used to make more complex indices. For example, let's create another random vector, Q equals RAND 20 comma 1. Now let's create two logical indices, one to find values above 0.2 and another to find values below 0.8. M equals Q greater than 0.2, and equals Q less than 0.8. Both of these return vectors the same length as Q. Therefore, we can use logical operators on them. For example, if we want to know the locations in Q that correspond to values both greater than 0.2 and less than 0.8, we can use M and N, which again returns a vector the same length as Q. Therefore, we can use this result to index Q, Q of M and N. This returns the values in Q that are between 0.2 and 0.8.
Alternatively, just like before, we could have written q of q greater than 0.2 and q less than 0.8, which returns the same exact thing. Once again, as before, we can use this type of indexing to overwrite values as well. For example, if we want to set to zero all values in Q that are outside of the range from 0.2 to 0.8, we could write Q of Q less than 0.2 or Q greater than 0.8 equals zero, which finds the values less than 0.2 or greater than 0.8 and sets those values equal to zero. One note to make is that the values zero and one are not themselves necessarily logical values, unless they are returned by logical expressions. For example, if I declare a vector d equals one zero zero one zero one, and try to use it to index a vector such as a equals one through six, this will not work since the values in D are not logical values, but rather integers. However, there is a function in MATLAB that returns zeros and ones into a logical vector, like this. E equals logical of D. Now I can use E to index A, such as A of E. which returns the values corresponding to the ones in the vector E. A useful application of logical expressions is the ability to easily count how many elements of a given vector or matrix satisfy a condition. For example, if we want to know how many elements of a random vector are less than a given value, we could use logical indexing and find the length of the result. For example, P equals rand 20 comma 1 then we can find length of p of p less than 0.4, which returns 8. Notice that I had to write p of p less than 0.4 as the argument to length. If I had written length of p less than 0.4, I would always get the answer 20, no matter the condition since logical expressions always return a vector of the same length as the original. However, p of p less than 0.4 returns only the values I want, so I can count them. An even easier way uses MATLAB's leniency when it comes to variable types. We previously saw that integers are not logical values unless we make them such with the logical function. However, even though logicals are not really numbers, MATLAB will allow you to add them. For example, Using our logical vector e, from before, we can write sum of e, which will add up all the values in e. Since there are three ones, we get the answer 3. Likewise, we can count the number of elements that satisfy a condition in our random vector p by using sum of p less than 0.4. And again, we get the number 8. Now, we are counting how many ones there are in the logical vector p less than 0.4, which is of course the number of elements that satisfy the condition. Altogether, logical indexing is extremely useful. It allows you to find subarrays very quickly and efficiently, whereas in other programming languages such commands would take many lines of code. Although these commands can still be executed in MATLAB the same way as in other languages, the methods shown in this tutorial make things much easier and compact and are an excellent tool to know how to use.